finally, we got it all going. Okay, so now I'm going to go grab a beer. Finally. Oh, watch out for the dog. Yep. Uh, so this one here is the Wabasha. What, what year was the Super Bowl this year? What number was that? 52. So uh, this is Wabasha 52 uh, Super Pale Ale. This is a special limited release uh, for uh, the Super Bowl season. And um, I pulled up a little bit. So this is a Super Pale Ale. It's a dangerously smooth pale ale brewed with mosaic and cascade hops. If you uh, are lucky enough to grab one of these, they might still have some down at the brewery. Um, I'm not sure how widely uh, how widely this one was distributed, but uh, let's try this one out. This is a 7.8. This is a pretty heavy beer here. Glad you're here to help me drink this one. Although I don't have to drive home. Yeah, you don't have to drive home. Don't pour mine too big. <clears throat> Close. Close. I'm just good. Ooh, that's a nice sweet smell coming out there. Mm -hmm. Can't see it. So there's a good close up of the beer there. Uh, here, can I borrow your camera real quick? Put this flash on. Nope. Probably turn the flash on. All right, very thick foam head just sticking around on there, nice and soapy. Nice sweet malty nose coming off of it. Tastes like a good, uh, or smells like a good uh, fresh loaf of bread. Yeah, it's nice. It has a nice smell. Great smell. I'm too, liking but, it. Yeah, Wabashaw is one of my favorite breweries. I think uh, they were uh, 2016 or 2015. Uh, 15. 15, yeah, they were probably my favorite brewery that came out of 20, uh, 2015. Yeah, they, they opened up their tap room, their larger tap room, and I think about 16. Yeah. Maybe it was, maybe it's been longer than that. No, I'm pretty, I, 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 I could have sworn it was 2015, but good old 55107, I know that zip code very well. Down in the deep of the west side, they've actually got a new neighbor coming up, they've got Yorg. Yep, opening up. coming up, but uh, they they uh, continue to have some delays, but What's eventually going they're going to be they'll be right right next door, and it's going to be a great little just a little, little brewery destination. Brewery destination. Then uh, you, is there another one that's down the street? Was there talks of putting one down the street? There was talks of it, but I'm not sure if they are actually there or not yet. Okay, but um, right across the river, there's a few of them going up right down and. Uh, Downtown, the nearest park, uh, lower town area. There's a couple of them down there. We actually went to one, the Barrel Theory. Yep. So, wow, I would not have guessed that that is a seven point eight. No, it's um, it's not. Uh, well, it's not heavy. That's for sure. It's nice and smooth. Yeah, it's extremely smooth. It's got a thicker mouthfeel to it. I mean, it's definitely a, a chewy beer. Yep. Um, but I mean, it's just, it's just excellent flavors. So, I mean, it's, I like the, 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 the yeah, the haze, color on yeah. It, the haze on there. And the yeah. It's nice and hazy, unfiltered. Yeah. Um, but also, um, I mean, you're definitely getting those, those two, uh, the mosaic and the cascade mix of the hops. I mean, it's got that, uh, I don't know, almost a tropical fruity pineapple-y taste to it. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's so, been out of practice taste, you know, describing beers, but you're yeah, right. We'll get, we'll get back into it. You're right. I do like this. So, Jason, we've been uh, we've been on a couple beer uh, vacations. 
So, oh, um, yeah. yeah, we have done it. So, like, what, are there any breweries out there that you kind of remember that you really like to and mi- kind of miss and wish you could bring back here to Minnesota? But, you know, the one that just caught my eye recently was Dark City. Dark City, that was one of our ones in New Jersey, yeah, right? In New Jersey. Dark City came out with a beer, and I, I apologize, I don't remember what it was, but it looked incredible. It looked really good, and I miss Dark City. I really like their beers there. I like the owner. I like the area that they were in. The brewery, the tap room was nice and, and welcoming, and, you know, it, it. the beers there were, you know, for everyday persons. You know, it well, wasn't very complex, I don't think, but they were they were great beers. I think I think Kane Brewing out in New Jersey had had probably the best mechanics down, but there was yeah. there was more heart and soul into the whole Dark City one. Yeah. I think that was probably yeah. my favorite brewery yeah. that we visited out there. I do have a couple of uh, those left, so maybe we'll get to those in our next show. Be kind of fun to uh, to bring those out. Oh, and, that would be awesome to try that again. Yeah, so that would be nice. But yeah, Dark City I think was my favorite next to. Uh, what was the last one? Uh, Icarus. Icarus was Icarus fun. Icarus was a was a Icarus was really just a, a lot of fun. Ooh, those guys were just yeah. a blast out there. Probably yeah. one of the best tap room staffs I've ever seen. Yes, yes. Ever. They were so passionate and they were all into it. And I was just like, "Come on, you're so passionate about it. You've got to be one of the co-owners." Like, no, I'm just a part time yep. schlub, just yep. like everybody else here. And um, so yeah, they were really good. They had that banana beer that that still just beer, sticks that in just, my head. That was that was. That was fantastic. I uh, never. That was a banana wit, and yeah. I had never even. I mean, I've I've heard of banana wits before, and I've I've mm-hmm. seen home. I've heard of them in homebrew uh, clubs and in some of the podcasts I listen to, but I've never seen or had one before, and that was my my first yeah, that one. Was, so that was a fantastic beer. I mean, that was really good, and the atmosphere. Excuse me. The atmosphere again was just a phenomenal atmosphere. Everybody was in there having fun, and then the the thing that caught my eye. Was the vinyl, the vinyl records they were yeah, playing. Yeah, yep, they had the vinyl records. I mean, not many places do that anymore, which was awesome to yeah. see that. I yes. mean, this, this was just great to see that and be in that atmosphere. And, and the creativity of those, of the people there for the beers was, you know, that was a lot of fun to have. Yeah. Yeah. So for those of you just joining us, we have our Wabasha 52 Super Pale Ale, and that's what we're drinking right now. It's a 7.8 APV, uh, pale ale style beer, um, and it is excellent. It's super drinkable, and this is, it does not taste like a 7.8. I could have drank that whole bottle and just been gone with the wind for the rest of the night. Yeah, that's it's. Um, that's what I'll yeah, sneak I'm, up. I was on surprised you. it was 7.8 when you started pouring it because I don't know pale ales don't get that high, do they? Or I don't know, maybe I'm mistaken, but oh no, pale ales can get that <clears> high. That's, um, it's not that's not so much. That it's not so much that they, they get that high. It's just you don't normally see them get up much past six, mm-hmm. six and a half. Um, once they start getting into the 7.8, we're starting to talk like almost almost a double. Right. So um, Definitely a great beer. Would have been fun for the Super Bowl. I'm jealous I didn't get one of these. That would be. Yeah, I just kind of got the, uh, one of these off of a fluke. Dan uh, picked one up for me uh, the last time we had a beer plumber oh, meeting. Nice. He just happened to be at Wabasha before coming out to meet me. Nice. He's the only one I know that needs to chase beer with beer. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. So, uh, by the way, speaking of Dan, uh, Dan is one of our, Dan is our uh, um, our editor in chief over at beerploma.com, which is where you can find us at. Uh, he is an excellent author. Uh, him and Eric uh, write most of our articles on beerploma.com. Um, and you can find some great episode or uh, great issues out there about all things Minnesota beer. Mm-hmm. Um, and also, Dan writes this uh, once a year series on a, a beercation that he takes. Uh, oh, this I'm, year was Michigan. This past year, yeah, was this Michigan, is, past yeah. year was Michigan. Yeah. So you can follow all of his journeys at beerploma.com. Uh, you can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. We're a little bit of everywhere right now. So. Mm-hmm. Um, for those of you who are joining us, don't forget uh, Northern Ale Guide. Uh, they have four new breweries that, that you can get an insert for. So if you ordered one of these, or um, if you haven't ordered yours yet, order it now because then you'll get the four breweries too. Um, but you can get those inserts and you can get four additional beers for the price of this awesome Northern Ale Guide. So um, yeah. make sure you go, uh, make sure you email them and get your inserts. 
um, and get those four free beers because uh, you know it's already a great value and this is just adding to it. Yeah. Um, part of my goal this actually this year um, is I'm working on a series for Beer Pluma, uh, for the blog, um, and it's going to be the Northern Ale Guide tour. Nice. And uh, we're gonna I'm going to do them all. So that's my goal, and I, I'm, I'm lucky enough to have a great partner who supports me and helping me out with that. Yeah. Um. So. Um, well, yeah, yeah. Like deed, deed all the you know yeah so um and i've got an excuse to go up to duluth not that i needed one. Wow, no <laughs> uh, sorry my girlfriend's from duluth so that's uh that's my excuse to go up there <clears throat> so lots of good breweries in there um go out there try something new which ones have you used so far already this year uh none of them actually um i uh actually well no i, I apologize i did use one I used Omni. I used uh, the beer or the stamp for Omni. Okay. Um, that <clears throat> that's a nice place. It was a it was a busy busy night. It was Saturday night. They had a, a live comedy thing or something like that, which was whatever. And I didn't care for it, but um, the beer was good. The beer was pretty good. So well, look at that water shot's in on there. <laughs> so I don't know if you guys are on YouTube. Go check that one out. Oh, and Wild Mind's out there. That's actually the closest brewery to where we're at right now. Nice. Check that out. Maybe we'll shoot an episode live there. What's going on with your phone? Oh, just people. Soccer moms. Yeah. I wish. <laughs> Not true. <laughs> Not bad. I really like that one. On a scale of... Uh, Zero to five. Um, well, first off, I, I kind of rank things a little bit differently. I don't believe in degrees of failure. So a bad beer just gets zero. So uh, an okay beer gets one star. And the best beers on the planet get five. I never give out too many fives. I think I've given out two in my yeah, entire pretty, life. Uh, I'm pretty, pretty hardcore. S- pretty stingy on those fives. Yeah. Um, but I am safe to say... When I go on Untapped later, uh, this is at least a three point seven five for me. You know, I, I liked it. It was nice. I'm not your typical pale ale kind of guy, um, but you know, I I liked it. It wasn't wasn't your like I said, wasn't a typical pale ale. Where it's got that lot of bite to it, mm-hmm. like uh, the those IPAs that I just truly despise. The ones you have to the ones where you uh, open it up and it's a bottle of crushed hops. Yeah, yep. yeah, that's. I don't care for those, but this one, this, this paleo is, doesn't have that bite. It was pretty good. You know, I, I give it a three on the untapped scale. Okay. Um, I'm going to grab the other beer. Why don't you finish up there and we, well, we can talk about that beer while you finish up. Sorry, Bella. We do have our, uh, our, our official team mascot right here. Uh, you can follow Bella on her beer journeys on our Facebook page at beer. Uh, just go to uh, facebook.com slash beer ploma. All right. I got bells. Come here. Come on. All right. So here we're back with a brand new can of Bent Paddle Brewer Series Valve Jockey. Um, I just love everything that Bent Paddle puts out. Uh, they're definitely one of the finest breweries uh, in the Duluth area, if not all of Minnesota. Uh, they're a great bunch of guys. Um, luckily, I, I get to spend a lot of time up in Duluth um, right now, so I'm enjoying every chance I can get to go up there. And I also believe that they are in our Northern Ale Guide. Let's double check that. But Kenny Creek, Mankato. Yes, yeah, Bent yeah, Paddle. Bent Paddle's in there. Bent Paddle is in there. Um, so don't miss out. Here's another opportunity to try one of these fa- these fantastic beers for buy one get one free. How can you go wrong? I sound like the NPR person who's like you know trying to get the pledges. Oh, <laughs> I guess I don't listen to NPR, so I won't know. So, um, so this is uh, part of their uh, their their brewer series. This is a German style Doppelbach. Um, it's a full bodied meal in a glass. Um, 
and it's a hearty lager, so it's from the lager family of beers, um, and it's perfect for the winter landscape. So, Jason, are you ready? Let's do it. Let's roll. So, and by the way, um, 5% of sales of this beer are being donated to Positive Energy Outdoors. So, uh, this is available in four-pack, 16-ounce cans, and limited time on draft at select locations. So, you can go to bentpaddlebrewing.com for more information on this beer. Oops. So, remind me again, and maybe I missed it, just missed it, Doppel Box. Well, it's, it's, um, it, it, it's twice a box. <laughs> twice, twice a box, okay. Yeah, do, a doppel is German for, for double, okay. and it's a Bach beer. This is the, the, the German equivalent. It's going to be a sweeter beer. Okay. Well, they, well, they tend to be a sweeter beer. Okay. Um, but this is going to fall into your brown range. Uh, it's going to be a little thicker and chewier. Oh, I'm sorry. I gave you a bad pour. That's all right. Okay. I'm going to get your camera again. Oh, we got some more in there. Shoot. I still got more beer to go on that 52. Get out of there for a minute. Bingo. There we go. Get those in. Uh, so, um, and again, this is a lager. So, uh, for those uh, who don't know, so if you're kind of new into the whole beer world, which is what we're about, we're about education in a six pack. Uh, there are two main families of beer. Then there's kind of this weird hybrid offshoot that's kind of in between. But you have your lagers and your ales. And your lagers are cold fermented, which means that uh, they have to be uh, fermented at colder temperatures, usually less than 50 degrees. And your uh, ales are warm fermented, and they are brewed at a much higher uh, temperature. And uh, they, there's also, they use two different, the two different main uh, strains of yeast. The first, uh, the L one is uh, Saccharomyces cerevisiae. I always forget the, the lager yeast, but. I won't know. <laughs> well, you know, it'd be great if we had these like wonderful little inventions in front of us that uh, we could look stuff up on. Lager yeast. Saccharomyces cerevisiae and Saccharomyces ovarum. So this one's got a much browner head, uh, not quite as soapy, um, but it's definitely sticking around. So either I'm doing a really good job cleaning my glasses or these are just really well-constructed beers. I'm going to go with their well-constructed beers. So um, definitely kind of like a, a brown ale, Newcastle type color to it. Yeah, it does have that <clears throat> brown brown ale color, which I like brown ales. So this should be, you know, I already cheated and I have a sip, but I, you know, it's pretty good. So just out of care, just uh, for a frame of reference, uh, Bach is the German word for goat. Oh. And oftentimes when people make box, you will find goats incorporated into their, into the artwork on the, um, on the can or the bottle. I'm not seeing one here on the valve jockey. That doesn't mean it's not good. Uh, but you'll often see goat being associated with box. Oh, that's interesting. I did not, not know that. And then with Doppelbox, <clears throat> there was also uh, a tradition that you add uh, ater to the end of the word that you named your beer after. So like uh, you would call it, uh, uh, this would be Minnesota ater if you named it Minnesota. Mm -hmm. But um, so they added ater to the end of it and that was kind of a, a long standing tradition with Doppelbox. Very nice. I'm liking it. You got the, you know, again, it's got a decent smell, but I, you know, yeah, I mixed a little bit with it with the other one, but you know. So you're gonna find that um, this is going to be uh, it, it's definitely a sweeter beer. Oh, very much so. Yeah. Not not as carbonated. Um, so a lot of people think that that lagers can only be 
Hi there, Patrick. How's it going today? Thanks for joining us. Uh, right now we're in the middle of our valve jockey by Bent Paddle. So I'm just kind of talking about... Uh... Oh, good. Good. Good to have another beer lover here. So are you familiar with Bent Paddle? <laughs> Patrick says, yes, yes, he is. Oh, look at that. Then there's... Yes, it is great. So this is their new valve jockey. It's out there for a limited release. So uh, if you get the chance, talk, uh, go, go try it out. So, um, so as I was talking about uh, on this valve jockey, you'll notice that you're getting those nice roasty flavors. But the thing is, is that when people think lagers, people think uh, people think of like pilsners and lighter beers that are like high in carbonation. Lagers have like an intense range of, uh, that go all the way from Schwartz beers, which are just inky black. Uh, we are from uh, Richfield and Invergrove Heights. So we're from the Twin Cities area. How about yourself, Patrick? Yeah, Patrick is asking us, where are we from? Go on. Okay. So anyway, uh, we'll wait for Pat. Well, we're Pat. We'll wait for Patrick. Um, so um, lockers. Please from Colorado. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, so. Lagers have like this great range that go all the way from the inky blackness of Schwartz beer all the way down to a very light straw color look to it. So it's not just Pilsners. There, there are tons of beers out there that just cover within the lager spectrum, just like, um, yeah, we like tons of liquor. <laughs> sure, why not? Uh, so, um, just like ales, they can go all the way down from a Kolsch all the way up to a stout. So it's, there is, when you think of lagers and ales, don't think of, don't think of color as being, um, a deciding factor of what a beer should be. So there's Darth Vapor again. So uh, the head's settling down on this. We've taken a couple. Uh, we've taken a couple swings of the swings of this. I'm tasting that roastiness, but because it's a lager, roasty, malty. Yeah. yeah. But because it's a lager, it's coming off much cleaner. It's not having that. Uh, it's not coming off as uh, um, as fruity as an mm -hmm. ale would. I mean, so it's definitely a much cleaner, much crisper flavor to it. But still, it's just roasty, light caramely. Yep. Um, not a whole lot of carbonation to it. It's just a really good beer overall. Just well put together. And an excellent example of what a box should taste like. Yeah, it's it's great. I love the, like you were saying, you know, unfortunately, I tend to repeat a lot of stuff. But it, I like the roasty malt taste, the, mm -hmm. car the light caramel flavor on it. Um, it's... Uh, you know, it's a box, so it's an easier drinking beer for me, at least. I like the dark, the darker ones, anyways. Yeah. Especially now that in the winter, you know, you like that dark, darker ones kind of warm you up a little bit. But it's definitely, um, it's definitely pretty good. It's definitely good. Believe it or not, box were actually a beer made for spring. Really? This is actually a trans transitional. <laughs> it's, it's actually probably the the most well known springtime beer. I didn't know that. Yeah, so, um, like, I mean, definitely when you think of uh, um, a bucket or spice beer. I've never heard of that one. Never, never heard of that one. I'd try it. I mean, definitely. I mean, we have no compunctions. We'll try any beer. So we're, we're real just big beer fanatics here. I'm sitting on a bottle of uh, New Belgian or uh, New Glarus Sour. We'll probably try that one on the next episode. Well, that does sound good. I, I know Jason here really likes anything that has to do with apples. Oh, right. Which I give him a hard time about all the time. <laughs> By the way, guys, uh, just FYI, this is my official Bent Paddle shirt. They sell excellent merchandise, probably some of the best merchandise out there because you can, like, wear it to work. I wore this to work today. It was awesome. Gotta love merch. You gotta love merch. So, uh, how was your experience at Omni? I haven't been to that one yet. You know, like I, like I said, um, it's it's a nice brewery. 
It's kind of got that outdoorsy type feel to it, I guess. I don't. I, I mean, it's it's definitely a fun place to go. The beers, you know, and I wish I could remember what the beer was that I had, and I I'm blanking on it, but it was it was fun. I like I like the atmosphere. I just wish I wasn't there on comedy night. <laughs> it was wasn't funny. Yeah, if there if there's one thing about but, Jason is it's like he does not like humor. Well, you know, I, <laughs> I, I I I like humor. I like good jokes, but it just wasn't coming that night for, for me. <laughs> and but um, definitely a fun place. It, they definitely have a nice patio. It looked like for the spring and summer mm -hmm. and fall even. Definitely a good place to go. They got a nice little area where a food truck can pull right up into. The, the patio area, so that's that's cool. You know, you have the, gotta have those food trucks out there, but yeah, um, definitely, it's a fun place to go to. I, and the beers were, you know, pretty good. I liked them. Hey, we were recently at Barrel Theory together, weren't we? Yes, for we New were. Year's, yep. um, yeah. New Year's Eve. Oh, what did you think of that place? I liked it. Yeah, I really liked you it. Remember, I, well, I, I did. Um, the uh, the what there wasn't there a coffee one there. There was a coffee one there. There was a coffee. There was a coffee. Uh, <clears throat> But it was like coconut. They had a coconut and a vanilla one. The coconut was excellent. Very good. I liked that one. You know, it wasn't overpowering with the coconut. It was mm -hmm. nice and subtle. You know, but you know, but it was that was a great, well put together beer. And they do a lot of. Unfortunately, they have a lot of IPAs there, but they do make up for a lot of. They have a those cold. great sour program. Yes, the sour program. I was just coming to that that sour beer that we had. That key lime pie was just yes. awesome. The Pat key lime pie was really good. Patrick, in answer to your question, yes, we will do a and a here in just a little bit. We're just going to finish up our beers here. Um, and then, uh, actually, why don't we open it up to Q&A right now? Hey, if you've got questions for us, just go ahead and pop them up there. But, yeah, Barrel Theory is a place to go. You know, and the great thing about um, that area, Lower Town, St. Paul, mm -hmm. you know, with CHS Field there, you know, Barrel Theory is within walking distance of it, so you can go have a great beer, walk down to the field, see Although a great ball game. At CNH, uh, C, uh, CHS, at CHS Field, you're already going to get a good beer selection. Well, yes, you will. Yeah, we actually have a gluten-free uh, brewery here, uh, Burning Brothers. We actually yep. got a chance yep. to meet them. If you go back into our YouTube channel, uh, so just search for Beer Pluma on YouTube, you'll be able to see our show with them. Uh, they put together some fantastic beers. Um, I have uh, I have a couple friends that are celiacs, and so I like having a gluten free brewery in the area because uh, it gives them an option to uh, it gives them an option to drink a beer with me. Um, personally, it, I'm not buying a whole lot of gluten free beer. You're not going to find a whole lot of it in my stash. Um, the sorghum just gives it this really sweet and sticky flavor to it that um, I sometimes just can't get over, even when it's a well-done mm -hmm. gluten-free beer. But um, sure, I've had plenty of gluten-free beers. Um, I can't say I would rank any of them as being like my favorites, but uh, definitely they are not off the table or off limits with us. Well, no, there, and there's a, I think there was another one that was, or at least the wineries are doing some gluten-free beers just based on their apple ciders. So they're going to start doing some stuff with their beers there as well. But I liked um, Bernie Brothers. I think he's a great guy. I liked the beers. Uh, the one beer the that they had was the pie. Uh, mm -hmm. the symbol, yes, the symbol pie. yes. So that was that was a decent one. And then they also had an... Uh, pie was one of my favorites. And yep. check it out. They have a really geeky story behind pie. Yes. Because there are a couple yep. of nerds down there. Yep. So uh, go on to their... Go on to their um, under their website yep. and look it up because they'll talk they'll talk about the story plus they'll also talk about it in that video that we did uh a couple of years ago uh with uh with the owners uh so my boyfriend's uh suffers from celiac disease it's kind of difficult time to find drinks that are gluten-free yeah so um definitely i think most ciders are gluten-free aren't they most ciders all well all ciders are gluten-free as long as they're not mixed with beer yeah <laughs> yeah most all the ciders are gluten-free um, if you are looking for a, another option, New Belgium has a gluten-free um, beer that they have that I have not tried yet, but um, I've heard it's pretty decent. And there are a couple other ones that um, that are coming out with a, with a gluten-free option for people. But the Burning Brothers is, is all gluten-free beers, and people are really surprised when they try them and 
and shocked that when they have them, they're like, well, this is, it's tastes almost like a normal beer, but we all know it's not. Yep. They don't, they have no idea. He has no really advertising that it is. Um, well, it is normal free. beer. I mean, it is processed well, right, like right. beer. It is. I it mean, is. it is beer. Yep. It's just instead of using wheat and barley, they're using sorghum and um, other gluten-free grains. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I missed that last comment there, Patrick. Uh, sorry. I think that was Patrick even, or Pat who said that. Can you, can you go ahead and shoot that comment back up at us? I wish there was a way to go back and scroll through the old comments and stuff. I see we got a, a, a visitor on YouTube there. Hi. I've tried gluten-free beer. It's okay. <clears throat> yeah, it, you know, gluten-free beer is definitely um, a taste that you, you have, to, have to develop. To it. Yeah. You know, it is drastically different than a normal But hey, beer. if that if that's your option and you want to get you want to have beer, I mean, it's well, and it, it was funny when we were talking to the gentleman down at uh, Bernie Brothers. He he would always laugh about the college kids coming to his shop and drinking one, two, maybe maybe three, and they're claiming that they don't feel the effects, but they're <laughs> they're actually pretty pretty drunk by that point <laughs> because of the way the sugars and everything's are made up on the on the gluten free beers. I think Burning Brothers is they are also in, yep. in uh, Northern Ale Guide because so. that was their first year when we used it. They were in there. Yeah, well, some of them have dropped off though since that oh. since that year. So don't uh, don't assume if they were in there in the past. I don't know what's wrong with those breweries. Why do I talk to her? <laughs> and the great thing too, if you live in the St. Paul area, in a couple of years when that soccer stadium is built in the Midway area, Burning Brothers is like three blocks away from there. I know Burning Brothers is in. I thought Burning Brothers was in here. Let's see. Uh, the beer that we're drinking right now is uh, Valve Jockey. And it's from Bent Paddle. It's brand new. Uh, it's out there. It's a limited edition. It's part of their Brewer series. It's available right now in four pack, sixteen ounce cans. Yep, Valve. Burning Brothers number fifteen. See, I knew it was in here. Yeah. And come to come to since we're on Burning Brothers, it is Burning a Brothers. dog friendly environment, so you can bring your pooch there. I know we've talked about it a couple times, but I'm seeing that we've gotten a couple more people uh, visiting us, so I'm just going to say it. If you guys have your Northern Ale Guides, this is a wonderful way. Uh, you, there's plenty of breweries in here, and for each brewery you go to, you get a little stamp, and you get one, buy one, get one free beer. Great way to save on beer. Um, also, they have added four breweries that you can email in to get an insert that goes inside the book. So yeah. you're getting even a better value than what you originally paid for, because you're getting four more free beers. Um, the other one, the last thing, not not to overhash Bernie Brothers, but the last thing that is great about them is that when they have food trucks there, they ask that the food truck is all gluten free too. Yep. Yes. So, and the workers must bring in gluten free food because it like is that. a gluten free so, environment. So it's it's a wonderful wonderful place if you do have. Gluten allergy. Patrick asked if we are the makers of Northern Ale Guide. No, we are not. No, no, no. But they <laughs> are our business partners. They're our best business partners that we have uh, right now. We do a lot of work uh, between uh, our two companies. Uh, we're from Beer Ploma, so that's beerploma.com. You can check us out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. No, we don't sell merchandise. We are we are just craft beer lovers, and we have a blog. Um, and we, uh, we sell some advertising space to local businesses that are beer related. Um, so we did form a company over that, uh, just to help process those funds. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's what we're about. So most of the stuff that we do is, uh, is free and available to the public. So just visit us at beerploma.com and check us out. I'm almost done with my beer here. You want to give these, done. we got a good active audience here. You want to do one bonus beer? Yeah, we can do one. I think it's time to break out the dark city we were talking about dark city earlier on in the podcast uh we were talking about uh jason and i we've been on a couple of uh, beercations we've been down one down in indiana and uh we've been we just recently came off of one from new jersey back at the end of october um and we got to meet some fantastic uh brewers and makers of craft beer out there and one of our favorites was definitely dark city so uh, shout we, out dark city yeah shout out to dark city there so they sent us back with a couple cans, and I still have a couple. Let's try it. Okay. Give me a second, you guys. Oh, oh I don't know if I want to get that one up. <laughs> um, I got 
Boom Roasted, the Indian Pale Ale Coffee, and I got the Summer Azacoa. No, 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 you don't want this one. Yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah. <laughs> this was probably the fit, one of my favorite beers that we yes. had. And um, we got to try this one. It's a Berliner Weiss that's dry hopped with a Zaka. Um, we got to try the we got to try it paired with a different fruit. But he did send us home with a couple of these to try them out. So this is Dark City Summerfield. This was my favorite beer from them. They, I mean, it was incredible. Oh, well, we're going to have a problem there. Oh, there's no problem. I got it. That's good. You going to make me drink the rest of this? Yes. We don't have to go anywhere. <laughs> and I'm sorry because this is a bonus beer. I didn't really drag up uh, too much information on it. Um, but it is a 4.0 beer with 35 IBUs, 3.2 SRM. Uh, IBUs talks about uh, how hoppy it is, and the SRM talks about its co uh, color. So this is from Dark City. I forgot the name of the town. Asbury. Asbury Park. Asbury. No, not Asbury. Asbury's a different town. There's Asbury, New Jersey, and there's Asbury Park, and they're like miles away from each oh, other. Yeah. So this is from Asbury Park. Uh, this is very, this was the closest <clears throat> brewery to our hotel. And by the way, guys, uh, you know, I kind of like going weird places on, for, on vacation. Um, so I really wanted to go to someplace really odd for my 40th birthday this year. And, uh, yeah, thanks. I got Oh, okay. So, uh, according to Beer Advocate, this is a dry hop session ale soured in a, in the kettle with lactobacillus for a crisp, dark finish. Um, so, I, I really kind of wanted to go to just someplace odd, and New Jersey was it. And I didn't think anything of it. I just thought we'd go and have a, a couple good beers, talk to the breweries. But, I mean, just the beach in October, I was wearing sandals. Well, at the end of October, and just the food scene there was fantastic, and the beer scene there was fantastic, and they have such strict laws compared to us. That's where it's at. That uh, so every anybody who gets to go out there, it's at one thousand and one Main Street in Asbury Park, New Jersey, uh, and you can go to darkcitybrewing.com for more information on this beer. Um, but it's just a fantastic. <clears throat> Fantastic brewing community because it reminds me back of what Minnesota was like 10 years ago. Yes. But these people aren't doing it because it's a popular thing to do. These people are doing it because they have a real big passion for craft oh, he, beer. The, the gentleman that did it, and I, you know, I wish I could remember his name. Um, he, he, he's fantastic. He was just, he was unbelievable. Um, he was very passionate about his beer. He cared about his beer. I think he was happy um, that like I think he was Kevin. happy to talk to. Him. It's Kevin. Kevin. Yeah. Kevin I mean, Sharp. I think he was very happy to talk to somebody that knew a little bit about beer too. Right. I think right. he's so used to having to teach people about right. craft beer when they come in. And and the funny thing about New Jersey and and I'm well is that when you go into the brewery before you can have a drop of beer, you have to offer you a tour. You have to go on a tour. You have to go on a tour. So, you know, the law there is a little bit a little bit you know, different, obviously, but it's one of those places that, you know, this this gentleman, Kevin, is just so passionate and just, he does a fantastic job. Really love visiting with him and talking about his beers. And thank you again for sending us some beers back home to Minnesota. Um, he's, he's, it's fantastic. Um, the head on this one, the, the bubbles are really thick. Uh, very spongy, um, and they do definitely stick around. It's a very light, tart, crisp beer. Uh, hazy. Definitely um, just a little bit of sourness to it, and just a little bit of that, that fruit comes off of it from that uh, dry hopped Azaka. So one of the, um, some of the stuff that they came out with, and I think this is the one that they just came out with, was uh, called a Urban Decay. And it's a roasty, pitch black, chewy imperial stout, brewed with tons of dark roasted, dark toasted malts and brown sugar. That's the one I wish we could go back and try right now. It's eleven point one percent APV. 
You would only be trying one. <laughs> you only be trying one, but knowing Kevin the way that the limited amount that we do know him, yeah, it would have been a fantastic beer. Yep. And it's just I, I'm mad that we can't just be that much closer to those guys out there in Jersey. They, it's an up and coming brewery scene. So looking for a vacation, looking for something fun to do, go to Jersey, try these beers, try their breweries. We got a new subscriber. Thanks, Pernilli. Oh, thanks for joining. Gosh. Uh, this is Memories. just the way I remember. Yep. Prost. Prost. Do we have any other questions out there? There's a little more foam in your glass. Oh, you look great. Only a 4.0. <laughs> Beer Plum has been around since 2013. So uh, we've been doing this for a while. Uh, the staff has changed a little bit. I, I think I'm the only one of the original staff still around. Um, we started out as just a club that just got together and wanted to go out and visit breweries, but that was back when there was only like five breweries all together in Minnesota. Um, and it just kind of grew into the blog, and the blog kind of just took off. We have a great event that really kind of helped kickstart the whole thing, and that's actually coming up. And that's going to be our fourth annual um, Minnesota Craft Brewery March Madness event. Oh, so yeah. where people get to come yeah. along and vote for their favorite beers. Um, and that actually is kind of what kind of took us off into a whole new direction of doing this stuff. So, and now we're actually starting to like look into some different various things like advertising and uh, um, how did you two meet? Jason and I, well, <laughs> first off, you have to remember, so, so there, there's the core beer Pluma team, and that's Dan and I. And Dan and I have known each other since we were little kids. We went to the same high school together. Um, we went to the same church together growing up. I met Jason second, and I met Jason. So I met Dan when I was seven. I met Jason when I was nine. And we were in the same Boy Scout troop together. Um, and that's really where we kind of primarily hung out. And we just kind of never stopped. No. Uh, no. 30 years later. Yeah. <laughs> if you really think about it. Um um, but then we had, like, uh, Andy, he was one of our original owners. Uh, he's kind of stepped into the background a little bit. Um, Vicky? Vicky. Yeah, that's that's, about Vicky. that's Andy's, uh, Andy's wife. And uh, she, was a, she was a great, great author. I really miss her articles. Mm -hmm. Lynn? Um, Lynn. Lynn? Oh, yeah, Lynn. Uh, he, <laughs> sorry, Ooh. Lynn. Uh, Lynn, Jace, Lynn, and not this Jason, but Jason Flightman and Chris... Uh, no, not Chris Twight. Twight. Uh, that Chris Twight works for Lyft. Oh, Chris um, Kessler. Kessler. Yes. So Kessler. they they were our original podcast hosts. So if you go back onto YouTube and look up some of our old uh, Two Growler series, you'll see those guys. Um, and then uh, we had Jamie who worked with us for a little bit. Yep. Yep. We had Aaron who worked with us for a little bit. Yeah. For Aaron. a couple episodes and um, check out the ladies' nights. Yeah, the ladies' night episodes are just hilarious to watch. Yeah. So that's yeah, that's how we uh, that's how we all met. Oh, well, yeah, you know, again, great beer. Too bad it's our last can. <laughs> so we got one can of their uh, uh, IP, uh, their roasted coffee IP, which is really a crazy beer. I mean, it's too bad actually... they can't send us beers. Why can't they? Oh, I don't know. Dark City, send us more. <laughs> <laughs> what's my favorite beer? Uh, what's my favorite snack for beer? It really depends on what kind of beer I'm drinking. Um, actually, if you go back and look at some of our uh, older episodes, you'll actually find us cooking with beer. There's one where we took a big wood beer and we turned it into an ice cream. Uh, yes. We've roasted some uh, nuts with a beer glaze on them. Uh, really good. That the meats. One, we did, we did meats, didn't we? Did we a meat one? I think so. And plus now we've got a new staff writer who's working with us, but she's kind of out of the loop right now uh, for a couple of months. But she's going to be coming back, and she does a lot of cooking with beer. And uh, she actually had her first article about a beer bread that she made from scratch. She had no recipe for it. She had a base recipe that she kind of had an idea with. But the end result was nothing like the original recipe. So, But you can find that uh, recipe on our website at beerploma.com just look for under just look for our staff writer stephanie she's a great gal really appreciate her you better 
Our Facebook page has a lot of stuff too. Yep, our Facebook page has a lot of stuff. Uh, you guys can meet uh, Bella, who's floating around here somewhere. Uh, Bella, come. That's our uh, that's our team mascot, Bella. And uh, Jason does some wonderful shots of some of the uh, dog friendly breweries. Come here. She might go up this way. Hey, come here. Come here, Bella. Come here. Come here. You give her goldfish? Yeah, she loves goldfish. Come here. She's camera shy at first. Come on. Come here. Beer cakes? No, never had a beer cake Come before. Up. Come up. Come up. Come up. Oh, just give her the goldfish. Ah. <laughs> hmm. We'll have to try out a beer cake someday. So, guys, uh, if you're joining us on uh, YouTube Live or on um, Periscope, thank you for following us. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we're kind of winding down here. Um, don't forget if you are more if you are interested in what we're doing, you can visit us at beerploma.com. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, um, and Untapped. So you can follow us on Untapped. Uh, so you can actually see where I've been drinking. Well, thanks, Patrick. That's hey, we love your support. So and we love the enthusiasm. So hopefully we'll get to see you again when we do this again. It's been a lot of fun. And don't forget, if you're from Minnesota. <coughs> Get your Northern Ale Guide. And Sidewalk Dog. And Sidewalk Dog. Don't forget them. Sidewalk Dog Pass. Brewery Pass. Well, I think that's it for today, Jason. Yes. Prost. Prost. Have a good night, folks.